Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Phantom Brigade, where we still have a little bit of putting ourselves back together uh, to do yet before we can move on to the next area, and that includes uh, fixing a little mistake that I made. I don't know what was going through my head last time. I mean, I do know. It was the end of a long day, and I had just been doing a lot of stuff. Um, I totally built a sniper rifle mech, even though we already had a sniper rifle mech that is without question better at the job because all the good parts for it are in this one so hold on let's let's fix this this was supposed to be the vulcan mac right that said if we're talking about doing this thing i believe we got the workshop ability to build those if i'm not mistaken and we can make a higher level one right so more provinces that... Okay, so if we build something, it'll be level 5. And we could make it up to green. It would cost us 15 uncommon components. 400 supplies is not nothing, but it's definitely a bearable cost. So let's put that in the queue. Put that on the second, uh, the second printer. And I guess from there, we're just chilling. We have such a long time that we have to sit here because of the really bizarre decision that you can't recruit and resupply at the same time. So we got time to work this out because we really do have to also recruit. We should probably try to recruit like, I don't know. We should recruit a bunch is the thing because what I need is enough pilots so that when a pilot goes down, we can just keep moving. Oh, well. One problem at a time. Okay, so. See, the thing is I colored it the color that I want the heavy to be as well. It's just like every part of this, every part of this was, was right, except for the part where I put the wrong weapon on it for no reason at all. All right, so it effectively doesn't benefit, it doesn't need to have a secondary, right? While in use, secondary equipment cannot be accessed. So yeah, like what is the point of putting a secondary on there? I don't know. It, I don't know if it's possible. Would it would it give us the secondary if the if one of the arms got shot off? Like is it still present? Yeah, my other question, just really quickly here is Okay, yeah, it does still... The secondary does still exist because it does still affect your stats. Like, it, it slowed us down. I don't know. Weird. Um, do we want to... Knowing that this is absolutely not the way I... Um, knowing that I built this wrong. I built this as though I was building a sniper mech. Do we want to make any other changes here? Because I probably do... It doesn't need to be super fast. But I probably do want to beef it up a little bit because there's a pretty decent chance it's going to have to stand in one place and absorb damage some of the time. So right now it's got this medium torso with 216 integrity. And then of course 128 barrier, which is always, it's like a little hard to tell exactly how we want to rank those things against each other. Um, let's strip all of the parts out of here. So yeah, this, the slots are typed. I think we kind of want to go for this Asgard torso. I mean, it's very heavy. And we do need the thing to be able to take positions, but... So this thing has some bonus thrust. It's fairly, it's fairly low power, which is definitely con uh, contributing to the heat problem, or to the, the speed problem, rather. Heat capacity 100, dissipation 15. I might want to go for something more like a... Um... I mean, we need more power, right? I just I need to be faster if I'm going to be this heavy. And I need to be heavy. We don't need this to be light plate anymore, probably. 
If I put on barrier plate, we can improve the natural barrier within. Doesn't give us... It's a pretty small bonus, though. Like, we'd definitely be better off just making it heavy. Arm's a little bit more survivable. This thing is, like, unable to move, though. Yeah, this might, I might be, I might be going in too much with the torso. I think this torso, this torso is a tough sell. I want something that's like steady. And in particular, I want something that's going to give us good heat dissipation. So like, Right, because this thing does gen it generates a considerable amount of heat when it fires. And we do have to take care of that. So this has got heat dissipation built in. It's got a little bit of power redu re a power reduction built in as well, which I'm a little unsure about. Although removing it doesn't actually change our speed in any way. So I guess it's fine. See, it'd be really nice if I could get, like, it's, it's really strange to me that when we mouse over different reactors, it's not showing me the comparison values. The overdrive gives us a little bit better power. So we might be able to wring some heat out of it, but, or some speed out of it, but it's going to slow us down even, or it's going to lower our heat capacity, which makes me a little nervous. If I do that and I cut this, we can get all the way up to only slow. But then firing our gun at all overheats us. Which is obviously <laughs> not super ideal. The capacitor gets us back out of that hole without lowering the power. So right now the non-fire in the non-fire interval in a I, I'm assuming that the optimal interval is a zero. It doesn't actually say. But I'm assuming that the the action duration plus the optimal interval is the zero heat sequence length. Like it takes 3.2 seconds to cool, cool back down to zero from the amount of heat that's generated at, uh, from the shot. Because I could also see it being the um, the amount of time that it takes to cool down to the point where another shot won't overheat you, which is a different value, right? I'm wondering, with the weight reduction instead, it cuts things down a little bit. It does. We do lose a point of speed. But I was just thinking because this has um, heat dissipation reduction on it. But no, I think we'll just leave it like that for right now. This is probably slower than the other one was. It's pretty tough. I'm still a little I'm still a little leery about this left arm. Less than 300 HP feels it's a little scary to me. Okay, we can get some extra speed and some extra Man, why does that, why does that help so much? If we're willing to go down to like a light arm, obviously we could. But yeah, like versus the other heavy arm, as the heat dissipation on this arm is just like really bad and the. If I installed this, it would cost us another one. But okay, so we get our optimal interval is the is the uh, number down here. So we can at least eyeball that. I do appreciate that. To be perfectly honest, though, what I kind of want to do... Uh... Okay. Why is L code for secondary weapon and R code for primary weapon? I guess because the mechs automatically hold their primary weapon in their right hand. But that's such a weird roundabout way to do that 
when it could be like P and S for primary and secondary, right? Why is there an extra piece of information that you have to interpolate? The thing is, I do like the sensor, is where I was going. The heat sink is cool, but... Yeah, I think we're gonna we're gonna keep the range and modifier and especially the scatter pull down because this thing scatters like crazy. All right, there we go. Now I've constructed that correctly. What is the warning? Okay, yes, can serve as a failback if the primary limb is lost. So basically, like the only time you would ever get your secondary is if the right arm is blown out, but all of the rest of the mech still functions. I don't know that it's worth equipping it with something else. Actually, you know what? Out of curiosity, what is the, like, weight add of... Yeah, like, one of these little things. It's four extra mass. No, I just don't think it's worth it. The odds that we will be damaged in the very specific way that makes us still able to use that are too low. It's just not worth doing. Uh, all right. So while we were in here, I did notice we have a bunch of we have a bunch more blue items that we've picked up. Things that I am thinking I am willing to burn because I am very much looking for that ability to make blue stuff. So that's two, five, nine. Yeah, that'll do it. Uh, detach all their subsystems and then turn them, in, turn them into scrap. And then let's get the ability to make rares. Oh, it does also take 2000 raw supplies. Well, shit. <laughs> well, we're there at least. Still gotta wait through the rest and resupply. The home guard in the area will fully recover, which is nice. And then after this, we need to sit here and hire a pilot. I mean, the good news is that, like I said, I don't think anything's happening while we're passing time here. Let's recruit another pilot, at least. Honestly, I might even grab one more, since there seems to be... We're not, like, doing anything terribly important right now. If there were some compelling reason to move into another region and keep rolling as soon as possible, you could at least create a situation where people want to, um... People are compelled to do their recruiting while they have other stuff going on. Just get, get build up. I guess they'll let me hold up to eight pilots... Should we just take all of them? Oh, that's right. Each each one costs 200 supplies. Uh, okay. Well, then, yeah. We'll just go on to the next place. So, Vremel is 2+. plus. There's a lot, Yeah, there's a lot of, like, 2-plus stuff around here. We are now... Our personal level is 3.9. These values are switched. We are level 3.9, and our threat is 158-ish. But the game is not doing a great job of calculating that. And of course, it can't take into, effect, into account the fact that we can see the future. It's very difficult to put a number on that. All right. As you wind through the country roads on the mobile base, one of your pilots calls to tell you that someone is outside waving for your attention. All right. Let's stop and see what it's about. Could be an ambush, but... Uh, we're the brigade, sure. You have information about a place you saw not far from here. One of your pilots comes over to show you where the stockpile for cash is on the map. Okay, sure. Let's investigate. Is that... Okay, that's the cash way over there. Well, I was gonna hit... I, yeah, let's hit this because the farm makes your liquid, fix, your liquid fix not run out as fast. I could use some of that. So... What do we want to run? I'm wondering if maybe the answer is cut the marksman. Like, I definitely want my sniper in here. And then, do we want the heavy or... 
I do like the heavy. I'm, I'm, I am wondering a little bit if the heavy plus the sniper rifle plus the plasma launcher is too many mechs that want to stand back. And maybe we should only have either heavy or plasma thing. Because, like, it certainly, it certainly would be valuable to have, um... I don't know. There's not really any difference between these, right? It certainly would be valuable, I guess, to have the marksman in from a, you know, just directing, getting around people kind of point of view. Yeah, we'll keep it like this. I'm not done playing with the new plasma toy yet. All right, base has circled up around to the perimeter. We're ready to do the thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so we are trying not to destroy all of the civilian locations. Ooh, not just a tank, a crawler with a shotgun. Railgun repeater. So in theory, the railgun repeater could put rounds into us through buildings, I think, if I'm understanding that right. So we got to uh, perhaps take that seriously. This thing is marked as an incendiary spitter. It definitely has a cool looking weapon on top. I'm going to assume that that's something like a flamethrower, which is to say that, you know, it's it's essentially firing like a gel or something. Uh, so I guess just like stay away from it. But I do, I want to take that tank extremely seriously. Which is to say... Need to get a sniping angle on it post haste. Just a little bit blocked by the edge of that building, but with the way it's pathing, I'm not going to get unblocked. So we can have the assault rifle mech move forward. Right, for sure. So that I know that it will be safe to just run right across here. And then when you get there... Alright. There we go. Alright, everybody wants a piece, a piece of the old marksman rifle here. The Colossus. I should give these things names. I will remember their names if they're not just like generic garbage. So yeah, you are, geez, drawing a lot of attention. So right here, I want to initiate a leap too far cover. We're gonna be, we're gonna be at high speed for as much of this as we can be. And then when we come through here, in theory, I have a decent offensive angle on somebody. Ooh, a little bit of focus. We'll keep that marksman. We'll, we could probably take that marksman out of the fight pretty fast. Thing does not have a lot of power on it. All right, and then I think we want to pulse this area with the plasma gun. So let's see if we can... Part of the problem is I do not know how to, like... I don't know how to guess the speed of this thing. Oh, can I? Okay, I can intentionally aim at the building. Yeah, let's do that. They were just telling me not to do shit like this, weren't they? Isn't that, isn't that what we were just? Protect civilian, etc. Yeah, probably. Let's run down until we can get a cleaner shot. And then we can set up to start firing again. But I can't really... Yeah, we'll worry about it next round. Alright, all that's left is I didn't give real orders to the assault rifle unit. So obviously I want to be careful here. Maybe the best thing to do would actually be to run forward this way. 
If I run like that, does that... Yeah, okay, that gets you clear before there would be a collision. And then you just kind of, like, go around the, uh... The long way here. I know I'm doing, like, a very... It's a very sort of, like, piecemeal movement, but I want to make sure I'm not colliding with anything. I want to make sure all of our angles are staying clean. All right, here's hoping. Okay, so the marksman rifle did excellent work there. Uh, I don't know if you saw. Like, let's let's replay that and watch the watch the green thing from close up. That railgun shot does come clean through the building. Wait, sorry, go all the way back to the beginning. You know, I know how to make it go for. How do I make it go back? How do you get the replay? Okay, the I see. Maybe? All right, well, we can just explore it like this. Like, look at that. It just it pierces right through all of those structures and misses just barely because of the timing of the, of the leap. I'm actually very pleased with that. That was a good jump. Actually, I want to replay this part, too. Can I lock it here? Okay. So yeah, you can see it, it just sort of pulses damage to all of their parts simultaneously. It's not a good focus weapon, but it is doing real, it is doing real, um, real concussive damage too. Man, this plasma, this plasma thing is so interesting. All right, so we're getting machine gunned. The thing about this is we are being actively machine gunned in real time. And I would like to, right here, right at the beginning, just drop a pulse. I mean, on that guy should be fine, but maybe I should do it while moving. All right, yeah, fire what you can fire. I don't love that. The good news is we have the assault rifle right here to help sort of shorten the lifespan of these damaging effects. So let me just take a step forward so that I'm sure I'm not shooting my friend in the side. And then... We're going to want to move in from here and try to get ourselves optimal range quickly. But I don't want to get too close, and I do not have a good feel for the uh, optimal the optimal firing range on this thing yet, so. Or the um, the optimal range to stand away from the projectile on the on the plasma thing is what I mean. When I say firing range, that was not a very clear usage of that terminology. I apologize. <laughs> So this mech is currently crashing. How are you on your attack? You're, you're most of the way through. There might be one more bullet coming out. So he probably is going to need another hit. That's just a harvester. It looks like a tank. It's just farm equipment. If I get out here, I can probably put one. Yeah, we can try to put one or two into them from this side. All right, let's just make sure those things are going down. So we'll wait just a second until... Maybe I, actually, maybe I can just start moving. Because I do want to reposition for the flank, but also I don't want to get too close to this guy. I mean, I guess we can just get close and we can hand, hand gun him. Yeah, because the, the play is probably going to be to run, like, over here. So just in case you're still up, hopefully this will resolve that. 
All right, so the first, the first pulse comes out almost instantly, like at the very beginning of the attack command. And it did concuss out both of the tank pilots. This thing is, in theory, still a danger. I will say the handgun is, like, remarkably weak. Actually, you know what? You should probably be moving while you're doing that. Because I would love it if you would step down to, like, here, maybe? To clear the way for the assist. Gosh, it takes a long time for this thing to cool down. Try to get us a nice little spread out. It's gonna be a minute before you're cool to fire again. Okay, <laughs> the railgun is trying its level best to railgun my sniper. And honestly, it probably didn't whiff by that much. A right, little bit of a push here. As for the plasma launcher, I don't know. I feel like we might be done. I feel like I might be done launching plasma for the round. Ah, but that means I can be shooting missiles. This is actually a really good, I think this is a really good loadout for a secondary missile launcher because there are absolutely going to be situations where it's just like super not safe to continue like, as my units close in, it's really not safe to use a weapon with the kind of explosive power that this thing has. Ow. Okay, there we go. Pilot down, pilot down. The good news about the railgun projectile is that um, it's going to sort of mimic the, um, you know, there's a good reason that you use, like, hollow point bullets against bodies. Um, a railgun round isn't going to slow down and, like, spread and do con do a greater amount of damage every second as it is, like, inside of the enemy. It's just going to go clean through. Those through and throughs are not necessarily the worst thing in the world, so it does do heat, heat damage. It's a shotgun that fires incendiary ammunition. Huh. So you can you can try to overheat people and get get some heat damage on them. Unfortunately, um, I just don't know if that's very effective. I have no idea. I probably don't want your out of date railgun. Yeah, it's it's so um, it is so not obvious how much damage heat does really in the long term like it's really tough to uh really tough to put a value on that yeah let's just go ahead this is cool that's a cool mech design the subasa anyway turn it all into metal uh this is the same, this is the exact same shit in that earlier town. <laughs> Save the beer. Your base stops near a civilian facility. There are tons of workers gathered outside looking distressed. There's a base with soldiers not far from here and they've taken all our supplies. Oh no. Um, yeah, I'm recovering supplies. I'm trying not to, trying not to let, is this the facility? That's probably the facility. Whatever, we're gonna, we're gonna, you know what? I'm, I'm pressing the button. Fuck it. We can be contesting the province while we do this. I know it, it seems to have driven the numbers up, but also, like, I should be getting double credit. Right? We should be getting the credit for accomplishing the mission and also powering the enemy down in the area. It's kind of weird that you ever aren't challenging for control of a, you know, because like, I don't know. All right, let's, um, let's see. So, okay, these two are 
seeing a lot of attention. The other two are not really visible, so I guess that makes sense. It is a machine gun and shield, pretty heavy. Yeah, wow, very heavy enemy. Over 400 health on each of the arms. Look at, yeah, just look at the integrity of that thing. That's going to be a concussion kill. Honestly, this probably is too. But look at how grouped up they are. There you are. So the first... The first plasma ball comes out basically instantly. But it takes a little while to get there. They're all going to be pushing us. So I think that that probably works. You get targeted not that long after. So it's probably just like... Get a full round of pulses out and then move sideways or something, right? Actually, if I move to here... I can perhaps get them to shoot each other. How far up the hill can I fire? Not that far up. The thing is, they're not moving, they're not actually moving all that far forward. Yeah. This is definitely a weapon that's easier to use from above. Well, we'll try that. I'm going to take I'm doing some heat damage to myself here, but I'm hoping to uh hoping to earn it. Right, you're just going to close to the wall as best you can. Actually, probably like planning to just go around here. Maybe not all the way through. Well, again, again, I might be able to create this situation where I'm causing them to shoot each other. If I'm smart. So something like that. And then just like fire whatever it makes sense to fire <laughs> throughout that action. If I shoot a little bit earlier, I'm not, I'm not going to have a better shot because the thing that's obstructing me is mostly the cliff side. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm intentionally doing a cliff block here. But closer to the end, I might be able to... I'm going to go ahead and try this because I'm not sure whether my attack... My attack might shred this wall. And so the first hit will be blocked. Actually, there's that tank right there. Should I be shooting at that instead? Oh, no. Yeah, sorry. That's where that tank starts its turn. Yeah. Okay. We'll see about this. Now, these two kind of get to do whatever they want, and they don't have to be as wary, because the enemy's not smart enough to have targeted them. That said, this is kind of an awkward approach. Like, they have the high ground, and we kind of have to wait for them to come to the ramparts before we can hit many of them, I think. So I guess the first thing we're going to want to be doing with this mech is trying to change that. Since I'm not being targeted at all, this is a good opportunity for me to just run up and put rounds into people who are probably not expecting it. Although I might be getting myself pulsed here. I have no idea. That, that shot's pretty far to the left. Maybe I want to cut the secondary pulse. Uh, sorry, it's you. Yeah, let's not do that for right now. Just because I don't, I don't know. I'm not comfortable trying to guess whether or not that would hit uh, my people. And then the sniper can run up like... The problem is I think almost everything's going to be blocked. Yeah, it's really hard to... If I ran a little bit further, maybe. Let's see, put this right here. Yeah, it feels like it's all damage going in on the same enemy, but also I guess that's not like, it's not so bad.
That enemy's heavy enough that he may well survive if we don't do that much damage. to put up my shield. Okay. I suppose it's fine. From where you're standing at the start, you definitely don't have a shot on that tank. Yeah. All right. The one shot's going to have to do. All right. I'm really curious how the plasma ball is going to perform here. Okay, so the heavy defender that we took, that we put everybody on, uh, has taken about half of his health and about half of his concussion health. Oh, uh, it would be so nice to just drop a big explosive right into the middle of that group of them. We're so slow, though. Right, I had to get up to like here before I could do that. Yeah. All right. You have a little bit more movement left. You should probably throw up your shield real quick. Although I do have a lot of... I am, I am using the enemy to cover myself here. Throw up your shield until you get through. Keep running through. And then, like, over here, we can start opening fire once we've once we've cleared the obstruction. We've got them pretty much ignoring us. It does seem like the sniper gets to just fire into the gap for free. I'm hoping that the guy in front will be down by the time this second shot occurs. Yeah, they just, they do not care about that sniper. I'm going to have the marksman maybe step around this way. We're going to be potentially taking damage from their turrets if I do that, though. I definitely like um, using the buildings for cover here, though. I think that's really important. Uh, we could just we could just close up this way and do handgun work instead of instead of marksman rifle work. I don't love that. Yeah, and especially shooting into the shield side. That feels pretty bad. Maybe you just move to here to bait some fire. And then while you're over here, since it's kind of free to do so, just like kill a turret. Oh, except it's not free to do so because I'm still too far away. There we go. Now you can maybe kill a turret. All right, see how it goes. Well, I was right. The sniper did get uh, sniper did get an open shot on the rear robot there. This thing's pilot is concussed. Poor assault rifle mech needs to shield up again. Just break line of sight. The way that attrition is modeled, in particularly like um, the way it results in us having to spend our abstract healing resource. I do like a lot in terms of the way it affects your decision making during these like longer campaign pushes. Like I have to I have to think very carefully about where I can afford to take damage, not because of the impact it's going to have on this mission, but because of the impact it's going to have as we come closer to uh, to finishing things. And that's neat. This is the only actual like live target, right? Everything else is concussed. I think we did we did a good job of getting him to uh, to damage his teammate. I think we're good, honestly. Just 
somehow we're not good. Sniper shot didn't get there. I am horribly embarrassed. Alright. So, let's position here so that I have a nice open shot on you as you come around this wall. You're just absolutely going to pound him. That turret is down, which is great. Yeah, I don't I don't see this guy surviving. Um it's not even his mech I'm worried about. I think he's going to run out of concussion health real fast. Okay, there it is. <laughs> and then it's like that scene from RoboCop, you know? No kill like overkill. All right, an MG3 Hurricane Plus Plus. Yeah, put that together, fix it, put it back together, bring it to me. Um, I don't know that I want any of the rest of this stuff. Like, in theory, we should be collecting more high quality arms and legs and stuff, but I don't, like at this point, I think the only thing I really want is blue stuff. We can, we can fabricate most anything else. That was 36 enemy weakened from that encounter. That's wild. Uh, okay, so let's just head to this base. So here at the base, they're at 182. That's pretty serious. It's just some patrol. So we didn't quite get back to full. But I think we're pretty close, right? Yeah, it's super hard to tell from this display, but yeah, I think we're close. Close enough to just send them all right back out. Part of the downside of just traveling everywhere in overdrive. <laughs> all right. Meaningless noise, and then... Crawler plus two tanks... Okay, look at these uh, look at these big old fancy weapons. So you got a beam cannon on that one, which is pretty much the heavy, but you know it's a laser instead of bullets. Uh, not a thing I really want to deal with. Where is the thumper? Okay, thumper, you are positioned sort of awkwardly. But you are never targeted at any point during the turn here, so... We try to thump them, like, here. I think this will do some good damage on multiple incoming enemies simultaneously. All right, sniper mech. What I want to do is deliver a shot really early to this approaching mech in the hopes of burning one of the treads so that we can keep it near where the, uh, where the thumps are going to land. So it looks like I need to step in this way. Um, you know what? Let's here, let's assign our moves here. I think the assault rifle mech is going to run up along alongside here. This would be a good approach for us. And since we know how you're going to move, we can now plan the sniper's moves a little bit better. Cause they do want to end up like right there, I think. Try to put one into you. And then you are directly targeting, and you're the you're a beam weapon, so I probably don't want to stick around for a second shot. Honestly. I want to take more shots and then step to the side. 
And I don't, ex I don't know exactly where I'm going to find the next one from, but I want to put a couple buildings between me and the beam cannon. In case the first one burns down, you know? So we're going to juke this guy's shot up to here. It looks like I don't need to wait very long for him to stop firing. No, not even a full second. And then I step up. And I take my turn. That said, I don't think I'm going to kill him. But we can start stacking up the, um, the concussion damage, right? And then sadly, I think this route, as much as I like the flanking move that I'm doing here, I don't think we get to fire at all this turn with the assault rifle mech. Yeah, we just never really have a moment for it. And as we continue to move forward, so does he, so that that block remains pretty static. Yeah, all right, that's fine. Sometimes you just don't get to shoot. All right, let's see how this goes. Okay, I didn't realize that the beam uh, had such a short maximum range. They didn't even get to the buildings. The problem is the enemies also don't know how their weapons work, and so they do things like that. He was moving in with such confidence that I assumed he had some idea what he was doing. And apparently, that was not a safe assumption. Alright, I'm gonna really early on here... ...do some thumping, and then we're gonna run. Take a little bit of heat damage and get to cover. You with your sniper rifle definitely over uh, got a little over safe there. And of course the way I have this all timed out, yeah, that's it's just about to move. Uh, shit. I don't really know what to do. Let's start shooting at this thing now. Wait for it to clear the tower and shoot it some more. Somewhere around here, we can just move forward a little bit so we can keep we keep a firing solution the entire time we're shooting. So yeah, maybe the plan is to just it, disregard this thing. It has a shotgun, so if it does if it does get to this range and get to shoot our sniper, it will probably do some meaningful damage. Honestly, the sniper probably has to, like, run over here. We need to get clear lines of sight to what all, all the noise that's happening on this side. Yeah, given where the blob back is standing, we probably don't want to start firing until we, until we actually get over here. Okay, and your deal. So, a lot of fire coming your way. I'm going to, like, hop down. Yeah, let's immediately hop down. <clears throat> Run to here, wait for a little bit. I don't want to step out so far that I'm really taking fire from the other guy. But we can absolutely <clears throat> light this one up on the approach. It's going to take a lot of work to get through some of these really heavy mechs. we got to get started now. And again, it's almost certainly going to be 
a case of uh, concussion to death. Yep. Okay, so we did, in fact, concuss out most of the enemies through the center of the area. <laughs> this guy was not close enough to take too much damage, but he's still, he's still only at 15 left. I mean, this seems to be the strat, right? What kind of weapon do you have? I'm not really concerned about that shotgun maneuver he's pulling there. You need to probably backpedal. Gosh, it is a long time before you're safe to fire again. And this is just, a, again, just a shotgun, so we can kind of, um, kind of just let him shoot if we want. All right, somewhere around there is when we Step a little bit to the side. And we fire again. All right, between the sniper and the marksman rifle, I'm hoping we're going to get some decent damage in there. You might be... We might be at the point where we're kind of all set on the plasma. What kind of weapon are you wielding? An assault rifle. I can, that. You are not going to hit me from over there. That said, I'm going to back up a little bit, and then we're going to start doing this thing. Actually, I guess I can start doing it earlier, right? The secondary one especially definitely uh, can be fired while you are moving. We've seen uh, plenty of enemies do that. So, now, question. Can I? No, there's no way I'm jumping over this building. I can get around here in time to get some, get some shooting done. Alright, I think that's going to be pretty tough for him to survive. Lots of damage through the center. Pilot concussed. Uh, I believe we were told that enemy pilots, enemy mechs take bonus concussive damage when you hit them in the back. They're not as prepared to, uh, to absorb that. So that's one of the reasons that this, uh, this, Assault Rifle Mech is built the way that it is, because I feel like we get to take good adv good advantage of that fact. It's weird that the camera just jumped so high up in the air, I'm not really sure what caused that. <laughs> Alright, when does it start shooting again? Pretty much immediately, and it's in the range now where it's actually going to be able to hit sometimes. And you are not particularly cut out for just enduring this kind of fight. So, just wait until you're done firing, and then... Sadly, there isn't much I can do aside from continue to shoot. I might actually be able to Yeah, I can use the the like the top of the mountain here to screw up his ranging.
There's a moment here where we could open fire. I wonder if maybe I'm better off just handgunning the other guy as we approach. Somebody's got to get the damage on this dude. And then you can just keep shooting your weird crummy missiles. Got his back turned. Get him, crummy missiles. Ugh, always right before we're gonna find out whether a thing we did had a like, real effect. Terrible, terrible how that timing works. Okay, this thing is still um, structurally strong as heck. The metal will fight forever. The meat, on the other hand, I think is uh, is about to give up. Yeah, that thing has four points of concussion left on it. So you probably can just like move back this way a little bit. Yeah, I think like this is the this is the thing we're looking for, right? It's just to um just to concuss this guy lethally. And you basically just back up the whole the whole round, I think. I think I'm gonna have this thing back up as well. We are gonna we are gonna give him a solid thumping. Oh, he survived the first volley. Okay, pilot can cost, pilot can cost. Yeah, when we see those, uh, when we see those heavies, I know what's up. MS XL and Terry's Mark One. I, I, I would love to know what that is. Anyway, I'll, uh, yep, scrap the whole thing except give me those blue legs. We're probably gonna scrap most of this blue equipment as well, but you know. At least I will make that choice myself. The BM2 Glory Dog. <laughs> we should probably take a beam a beam weapon or actually use a beam weapon at some point. I know we have one in our inventory that I've just not been playing with. Uh, with the guards gone, you're now free to take the supplies back. Will those people want me to bring their supplies back to them? Yeah, they will. Okay. Well, I'm totally gonna, but maybe not right this second. Then again, doing it right this second would give me a moment to recover, because we do need a moment to recover. So the... that Okay, yes, I was right. This is the facility. Let's head back. We'll... Um, I can't help but notice we're not liquid fixing our mechs at all. Did I turn off repairs? Okay, I will spend 500 supplies for a hope. I'll do that. I'll do that all day. It's weird though that we're not repairing. I don't know why we're not repairing. Do you not, is it you don't repair while in overdrive? Yeah, it kind of looks like that's what it is. I mean, not that it matters. Uh, this should be a very straightforward battle. And then maybe we will not overdrive part of the way to the next fight. That said, I'm not going to um, try to jam a con each, each contested thing into one video anymore, because I think we saw how that went. Ooh, that's a Vulcan. Is that a Vulcan? It's a... No, okay, it's a machine gun crawler. All right, well, let's kill this thing real fast. That's my that's my feeling. Okay, so the only one who's not attacked over the course of this is the assault rifle mech, which really sucks. It's definitely one that I would like to draw some fire.
Is that tank going to interrupt the line of fire of the other tank? It doesn't look like it. That's a machine gun. It's hard to know exactly how much danger I'm in here. I guess I'm not too worried. Alright, let's stomp through these people's yard. Try not to stomp through their house too much, I guess. And as we're approaching, we get a pretty clean shot on this assault rifle tank. Followed by... Oh, can't, can't follow it with another attack immediately, sadly. We could start a little earlier, though. There we go. All right. That gives me, I think, a pretty good chance of doing some doing some permanent damage to that thing. Uh, so, okay, the Vulcan is going to hard focus on the Marksman. We're going to want to just, honestly, probably just crouch behind a, a big rock and let it happen. I don't know that we really need to do anything. Uh, we know that a committed shot from that thing takes forever, so we can just kind of let it occur. And you can... We can kind of just, like, sh try to shoot a thump over here. We'll see if that does anything. I'm kind of curious what effect it'll have on that structure, if I'm honest. All right, good concussion. It takes more than a second, or more than a full turn for them to travel that distance. Okay, so you are going to wait right here until the fire dies down. Okay, right there. Nope, don't, sorry, don't jump, just run. I'm gonna go ahead and rejoin the battle, or join the battle for the first time, as the case may be. And that thing's just... Okay, the Vulcan mech is just trying to disappear behind the house. That's not really a big threat to us, I don't think. Hmm. This thing does want to shoot me a point-blank range. That's concerning. Oh, right, I forgot. This actually doesn't... It doesn't even really dash all that well. All right, so why don't we do this in such a way that they probably, the tank probably can't really take advantage of its weapon anyway. All right, there we go, that'll do. We'll just, just be distracting so that the other mechs can do what they need to do, which is to say, shoot people directly in the face you know to give him a concussion or whatever uh you're gonna also attack again actually i probably want you to move up because your range is not there we go yeah we want to move you up to like here and then once you've gotten up here you're gonna attack like just kind of this area just Again, send send the thumps over there. Watching these though. They did completely level all of the fences and stuff immediately. Alright, so the pilot crashed, the unit is concussed. Unfortunately, this thing is in perfect health. <laughs> it has never taken any damage. And it is opening up immediately. So you, my friend, need to start moving immediately. Where is going to be the best place to break line of sight? The marksman has a pretty good dash. So I think it's going to be something like... I don't want to just turn my back to him, right? 
So we can like run laterally. Yeah, okay. This thing has actually assumed a pretty annoying position. This is this is decent strategy here. Unfortunately, there's only so much you can do in the 1v4. Do want to be a little cautious of the <laughs> the line of fire that I'm dragging around. All right, we'll just put some put some thumbs right there. And to be perfectly honest with you, I'm sort of thinking maybe I just like it's just a building, right? I'm just going to keep trying to put the sniper shots directly into him. I'll see how much of this we can punch through. Because this doesn't look like all that sturdy of a building. It's like a barn, right? Well, maybe it's a house. Shoot, I was going to say, if it's a barn, then most of it's just, like, empty. Right? There's not that many, like, surfaces that you have to punch through. I am less confident of that now. So with the with the um, with the plasma thumps, even hitting the other side of the building, they were still dealing a small amount of damage. Each one of those was doing a point of concussive damage to the pilot. That's pretty big. It's gonna try to step over here and machine gun me at close range. Which shouldn't be too big of a danger, as long as, you know, we get him. It does not look like we've been able to pierce the front of the building. I think this is probably not actually just not that good of a use of my time. So when does he start shooting? Right there? I guess really we ought to, um, sorry, let me wait long enough to get these shots off. And then we really ought to just duck behind the thing here, which means this attack is not actually useful. Okay. Never mind, all that other stuff is kind of ornamental. Yeah, sniper rifle's not going to just put a round all the way through a big house like that, though. Good to know. That was the thing that was worth testing. Uh, yeah. Level 4 blue Vulcan. Absolutely worth pulling. Um, well, we definitely want to take the torso, right? Yeah, we won't, we won't take this thing. That thing's only 38 supplies. All right, so actually we have almost liberated the uh, <laughs> the province already. And going and hitting that battle site will definitely do it. We got ourselves out of negative hope territory. I feel pretty strong about that. So our reputation with the home guard affects our ability to call for their help, it says. But I don't actually know in what set. Like, I don't know how we would do that. Even if I wanted to. Do I have a button that is like call for help? I don't think so. Hmm. Maybe it's like at certain events when you can, I don't know. Anyway, this is where I'm going to call it here for today to avoid accidentally uh, making another feature length battle uh, for Vremel. But I think it's fair to say we've probably gotten this one sewn up. The enemies do not seem to be leveling up anywhere near as fast as we are. And I think that's going to be a huge problem for them going forward. Uh, come back next time to see if that suspicion bears out. And we'll see you then.